Okay, cool. Welcome everybody to Game of Drones. Uh, my name is Fran Brown. I'm a partner at uh, Bishop Fox. It's a cybersecurity consulting firm. Helps companies secure their uh, networks and applications. Sorry for the delayed start. There. It's a good thing I had every install I've ever downloaded ever and could install a VLC player real quick and a few things on this system to get it running. Um, we'll go ahead and get started though. It's an interesting setup. I have to kind of manage this extended mode with the monitor all the way down there. A little behind me. Okay, uh, I got a lot I want to cover today. I know we're running a little late already. Um, but basically, I'm going to get started with uh, a quick overview of the danger drone. Uh, one, because it's cool. Two, because we're going to give one away to somebody in here. Uh, yeah. Woo. Yeah. If you can handle it. Uh, and then uh, I, I very quickly want to move beyond that and get into some of the drone defense products and the whole industry of drone defense products uh, and some of the stuff we were able to do in terms of uh, testing out these uh, fun products. And then uh, I'll do a little bit of overview of uh, some of the legal landscape and things that are happening and wrap up with uh, what the future looks like, which is scary and kind of crazy. Okay. So before I even get into the danger drone, I want to talk a little bit about motivations. Uh, why do we do this talk? Uh, why is this important? What are we going for here? Uh, there's basically a couple angles at this, but for the most part, um, when our uh, customers come to us and they say, hey, Fran, what do I need to know about drones or do I need, you know, what do I need to be looking into for drone services or drone defenses or products or is this something I need to do? I want to have good answers for them. And not only that, but I want to provide a resource uh, with this talk and the research to be a, uh, to, to have answers for people as they ask that. Because if you Google for drone defenses right now, you're going to get eight gajillion hits on, uh, which is basically all marketing material. Um, uh, and a lot of it is a complete sham. Um, so to actually put out a real resource that you could look at and actually get some real answers when it comes to drone defenses. How many people here have, have paid for drone defenses or are going to pay for drone defenses in the next year with their company or their organization? No. All right. Like three know. people. What are you guys doing in this talk then? I don't know. Yeah. If it's not a problem now, it will be soon. Yeah. I promise. Yeah. Who's worried about for your house or your kids or something like that or a few more? All right. Cool. Um, so yeah, so uh, I, I basically started seeing uh, a lot of crazy articles uh, and I, I had to kind of like peek at them after a while. You see, you know, popping up a Mashable, you see these eagles that are plucking drones out of the sky and these guys with these huge like bazookas. Uh, and uh, jammer devices, and, uh, and I just found myself asking. I saw the eagles, and I was like, I bet I, I, bet I could beat those eagles. Like, we actually. Uh, how hard would it be to beat an eagle with like with a drone and technology? You know, bring you know nature to a science fight. Um, is anyone really tested them to see if they work? Uh, so that's kind of how it started, and I started looking into it a little bit more. And the more I kept peeling back the onion, the more I I realized that this uh, this industry, for the most part, is. To say it's in its infancy is an understatement. Uh, to say most of it is a complete sham in terms of what's out there is probably a little more accurate. Um, but to say it's also very necessary right now uh, would also be true. So it's going to be important to be able to cut through that stuff. All right, introduction of the danger drone. So welcome to the danger drone. Uh, you see at the bottom there, there's a URL, the, the, the tiny URL. Uh, if you go to that, you can submit to enter in to be the person that wins the raffle, and we will wrap it up and ship it for you. A few people brought up, uh, you know, uh, I might not want to be have to carry this back through uh, the airport and stuff like that, so we figured this would be a, an easier way to do it. And was anyone uh, go to my talk a few years ago with the, the RFID, the Tastic RFID circuit boards? I gave those out live. That was that was a, a pretty crazy experience. I think I think like five people got killed in the crowd trying to trying to get <laughs> one of those circuit boards. Somebody gave birth. It was like people were knocking each other over. It was insanity. So to make it a little more reasonable, uh, you go to that URL and we'll uh, we'll ship it to uh, whoever wins. Uh, so quick with the danger drone. Basically, uh, the long short of the danger drone is we created that to be able to test out these drone defensive products. We want to be able to do penetration tests or product evaluations of people who are selling uh, drone defense products. Uh, and there wasn't really anything to do that. I always kind of looked at it as, um, you know, would you buy a smoke detector if you had no way of knowing that it would ever detect a fire? Like you need the ability to test these things out. 
So that was kind of the, uh, the origin of the Danger Drone. And essentially it is just a, a pen testing quadcopter. It's, it's, it's a hacker laptop that can fly. It's, uh, it's a Raspberry Pi based quadcopter. So anything you can install on a Raspberry Pi, which you can run full Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi, and it also flies um, for doing penetration tests. Uh, and uh, it has the ability to extend it to do whatever you want to do in terms of wireless, Bluetooth, Zigbee hacking. Um, we have custom shelving, so you can put your different ones. Yeah, it's created a custom shelf. M most quadcopters have the, you know, for the two shelves, one for the battery and one for the, the flight controller. We added a third one for your, your Wi Fi pineapple or your, you know, whatever you want to add in there to your quadcopter. Um, and here is a number of ones you could plug in. Plenty of open USB ports on it. That's a Raspberry Pi. Do software to find radios, Wi Fi pineapple, stuff like that. Different payloads you can stick on out there? Yeah, so we'll see if this works here. All right, we were having problems with the audio earlier, so hopefully we have proper sound here. Oh man, my Logitech wireless mouse is awesome. Oh, nope. what I need now is another cup of coffee. Can't hear it. Here we go. Let's see. Yes, yeah. Are we gonna restart this? Hit pause. Hold on. What the? Oh no, oh, no, hold man. on. We have to go back. You guys ready for this? Especially in some of the audio. Real hit pause. All right. Okay, so what we're about to see here is uh, just a quick demonstration of what you would use the Danger Drone for, basically to simulate any kind of pen test, especially over the air. Uh, and in this case, we're going to use it to um, hack a vulnerable uh, uh, wireless mouse to, uh, you know, do a drive-by outside a window and hijack somebody's computer. We nailed this like in two takes. Oh man, my Logitech wireless mouse is awesome. All I need now oh. is another cup of coffee. Like the submission for the Oscar for. Uh, uh, art. Uh, and out. Thank you. TLDR: Throw away all your wireless mice and keyboards when you get home. Um, yeah, so that's a, it's a pretty, uh, pretty easy demonstration of what's possible. Um, you can basically hook up anything you want to do. We had, that was a crazy radio hooked up to that, but you can hook up a Wi Fi panel up or anything like that and just do drive bys and uh, hijack people's networks and systems with the Danger Drone. Um, so go ahead at that uh, URL again uh, if you want to try to get one for free. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is like parts and pieces. Uh, uh, most of this uh, airframe can be 3D printed. We have all that up on our Thingiverse. Uh, if you Google drones for penetration testers, that was our project last year. But yep, the bulk of it could be 3D printed, including the custom shelf. Uh, it is basically a modified Earl Brain 3, uh, which is these guys are great. They're from Spain. They they built the quad. They basically built a Raspberry Pi based quadcopter that could fly, and we just added the ability to hack to it. Um, you could build it yourself for, uh, it's even a little bit cheaper now, but under 500 bucks total for all the major components that you would need. About 370 last time I checked. Yeah. Um, we'll be updating the website with a uh, new image and things like that later today, but already up there is a, the parts list and links to Amazon stuff that you can do to get it. And, um, it's all up on our website right now. If you go to dangerdrone.io or bishopbox.com, you should be able to find it. And uh, lastly, it's just been great. Uh, it, this has been good for testing drone defensive uh, products and evaluating them, but it's also in general, if you're doing penetration tests, kind of the advent of the internet of things is that everything is talking over the air now. And having a drone that can hack is kind of the ideal platform for hacking stuff over the air without consequence. Uh, so it's uh, been kind of nice uh, to have this capability now and uh, with there being more targets than ever um, in terms of, uh, you know, hacking Zigbee, hacking Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or you name it. Cool. Cool. So that's the on danger to, room. On to things in the news. Yeah. So, so uh, leading up to this talk, everyone I ever met has sent me every article about drone stuff that they've ever seen, and it's been awesome. So thank you, everyone, for sending me. It's yeah. like, did you see this, the article? Did you see this? And it's been crazy. It, the news has been great for this talk in the last couple of weeks alone um, in terms of uh, illustrating what we're going for here. Um, so three that I just wanted to point out in particular to kind of illustrate where things are at. Uh, in, in the industry. Did you, did you, did you guys call see this? We call that overkill. Yeah. Can you, can you just picture those guys doing it like, go ahead, do it, man. 
go ahead, use the three three million dollar uh, Predator missile to or Patriot missile to take out the two hundred dollar quadcopter. I wonder if it was a danger drone. I don't know for sure uh, that they took out. But yeah, it kind of illustrates that. Um, and what I would, kind of an assurance is that this is a this is a problem that isn't new. It's just new to most people trying to deal with air based threats. Good people in the military, like, oh yeah, defending yourself against threats from the air. Yeah, like we've been doing that for a while, man. Maybe you've seen Top Gun or, you know, anything before that. Like, so, but it's a very, you know, but it's just a new problem for a lot of people, uh, for corporations, for people in their homes, uh, having the ability to find need to defend against it now. But it shows that um, uh, the military also kind of needs to. Uh, they can they can take out. I, I think most quadcopters go out about 40 to 50 miles an hour, and I think. Uh, uh, Patriot missile goes at like Mach 3. Um, so they can handle these problems, but they're going to need, it's not really scalable, and they're going to need to adapt as well um, as, this, as the threat continues to adapt. You see on the right there as well, it's uh, one of the pictures of what they call like a flying IED. People are just strapping grenades to quadcopters um, for, to drop them off for suicide missions, stuff like that. Um, so as the threats continue to evolve from a military standpoint, uh, so will the defenses need to as well. This is awesome, by the way. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but a couple of weeks ago, some guy escaped from prison uh, with a drone dropped off some wire cutters over the prison yard to him, and they, they, they ended up catching him a couple states over. Uh, but he was able to break out of prison because the drone dropped off some wire snippers to him uh, in terms of you know, illustrating the threat. Prisons have been one of the people leading the way in terms of needing to adopt drone-based defenses, but thus far it's been primarily people dropping in weapons or, you know, or drugs or things like that. I think this is the first actual prison escape based on things that were dropped in with a drone, um, but it kind of shows the escalating nature of the threat. Big problem for anyone who runs a prison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a nightmare. All right. So uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this. You all know the wildfire, wildfires going on in California. There's some raging in Arizona. This guy got arrested for flying a drone near a fire to uh, videotape and document it, but he was impeding 17 different aircrafts for fire, firefighting aircrafts that were trying to drop flame retardant and uh, got, a, got himself arrested. And he's going to be one of the first uh, ones charged under the, uh, well, Yeah, the look at this guy's face. Yeah. This guy is the face of the new threat. <laughs> look, at, look at that mug shot. That is, this is a 54-year-old guy I thought it would make for cool YouTube videos. He was circling his quadcopter around helicopters of firefighters and emergency responders, putting their lives in immediate danger. Um, and he was posting it up on YouTube as he was doing it. Uh, and it essentially showed the lack of ability to defend against these things. What they had to do was they were like, all of our lives are in danger. We have no way of dealing with this guy with his quadcopter. We just got to let the fire burn and go home. Like that was their response to the situation. Let it burn. Let's go home until, until he goes home. Um, which is obviously isn't going to last uh, going forward. They'll need the ability to defend against, uh, you know, things like that. So since we've clearly demonstrated a need for uh, this market, obviously, people, there's all different types of industries that are going to need drone defenses. Let's go on to the drone defense market. Endangering 14 different aircraft. 14. Substantial risk of imminent death and injury to firefighters because he thought it would be a cool YouTube video with his, his new quadcopter. All right. Cool. So that kind of leading the way into the drone defense market. This is, I got to tell you, I, I've, I've had the pleasure of doing some pretty exciting research in my time, and pretty fun stuff. This has probably been one of the funnest and probably also one of the most ridiculous. At one point somebody in our company was like, what can we do with this? Let's be realistic here. And I was like, realistic went out the window a long time ago, man. <laughs> like we're getting falcons that go after eagles, the eagles going after drones and you know, air to air uh, combat going on. Like, I don't know where realistic fits in. Um, but just to give you kind of a breakdown of what the different products are that people are pushing out there right now is uh, you have basically air to air and ground to air for the most part. Most are net based. You have people who are shooting nets up at drones from the ground or, um, you know, drones themselves, either with big nets or shooting nets at other drones. You have predator birds plucking drones out of the sky. Um, as well as uh, lasers, which are pretty fun. Uh, they run about like $11 million a pop, though, so we didn't get access to one of those. Um, yeah. But uh, so all guys, this, this is what I was saying in the news, one article after another. I was like, I got to look into this. This is, this is crazy. Um, a couple of popular examples that you might see. Yeah, a little first-person view of the eagle coming in with a vengeance. 
Uh, in the middle top there, I sent that to every single person I know saying for Christmas this year, I want one of these guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, nobody, we found out they cost about 80 grand a pop and everyone was like, we don't love you that much. You're not going to get one of these for Christmas. Uh, you see some dog fighting going on there. It looks like Top Gun. You know, they're getting good missile tone and shooting a net at another drone. Uh, we'll see here, we did a, we actually got the test out in the desert, kind of one of these guys in the bottom left, which is a, a faster, bigger drone. This has a big net dangling from it that it comes and sweeps up your drone in the sky. Um, <laughs> pretty simple solution, right? Uh, and uh, you got some, one of those bazooka uh, jammers there, as well as another one uh, shooting uh, a net at a, and then actually capturing it uh, on the bottom right there. Um, so where this is right now, uh, basically uh, 2017 was the year of the drone, both consumer-wise and business-wise. People were adopting drones. It went from that weird RC toy store in the bottom uh, corner of the mall to you can get them at the grab aisle in CVS and Walgreens now. That's kind of like the, the transition of things going mainstream. And uh, uh, with that as well, people are predicting that by uh, 2022 that the drone defense product industry is going to be a billion dollar industry as well. So everyone is trying to get in on this right now. Uh, we did uh, research on, you're not meant to see this, but just give you the overwhelming, all the slides will be available for download as well, but there was 86 different products uh, that we looked at um, that were drone defensive products in some way, uh, from the Patriot missile to lasers to the net bazookas to the big flying swooping nets. Um, and it, depending on, one of the interesting things is if you read a top 10 drone defense products uh, report that you could buy out there or somebody, you know, somebody put together a top five, they're all different. You'll, you might get a different 10 depending on which report you read, which is weird, right? Like if you read a top 10 life hackers, top 10, you know, whatever, uh, you know, software for doing your taxes, most of them will be the same depending on what you're looking at, right? Like this was all over the board. Uh, there is no Pepsi or Coke when it comes to drone defensive products right now. And you have a whole crap ton of people that want access to that billion dollars coming up. It really just depends on your situation. Uh, and what this has led to is uh, making it extremely hard for security professionals to get any straight answers uh, whatsoever. So this is just, anybody here from Department 13? As right now. I should preface this with you're not going to like <laughs> the slide, so maybe not, maybe not put your hand up. But this is, this is kind of a perfect illustrative example of what has occurred due to all this money coming up. Everyone want to get in on this. Uh, this PDF isn't up anymore, but it's on the Wayback Machine. You get access to it. <laughs> they put themselves, they did a little matrix of some of the different drone defensive products up there. And you can see they put themselves in the top right quadrant above like Lockheed Martin and Boeing and uh, who have million dollar lasers to shoot down like MiGs and uh, so, they, so they're all the way up in the top right. This was on the 4th of July in 2016. They didn't even have a V1.0 product to sell until six months later. They had nothing except marketing material. And they had a lot of really slick marketing material. I mean, I'm reading like New York Times articles. I'm reading Reuters articles. You would think all these things are real. Oh yeah, I've read about that and I saw it here and it gives it the appearance of legitimacy. Most people don't even have a product to sell, but based on the amount of money they've already funneled in in marketing, you think they've been, they're on version eight of their product, version nine is coming out next month uh, and they, they, they don't have anything to sell you. And uh, I, I had money, I wanted to buy some of these products and it was, it was difficult to do it. Uh, I always get emails back from their CEO uh, saying we can't sell it to you. I think it's, they're running it in like a house. But, um, Here's a perfect example of great marketing material that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> same uh, company, this one that wasn't even out yet. It was, uh, how do they take down drones? Um, they mesmerize them. <laughs> With, uh, and the product is mesmer. And it's magic. Uh, what it actually do, what it actually does to take a drone out of the sky, I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. Other than it mesmerizes it. So, yeah, I strongly suspect that, uh, yeah, maybe, I can only, I can only imagine uh, what it's actually doing. Maybe they didn't even decide what it's going to do yet, so they just put some ones and zeros. Um, uh, we're going to go into some of these now, but if you guys uh, haven't had a chance to check it out yet, we did, uh, we went out to the desert with a lot of these products, um, got a lot of sunburn, where it's like 110 degrees out in Arizona, with a lot of really cool drone defensive products with, uh, and Wired did an exclusive, and uh, there's some video up on there uh, 
where you can check out some of the exclusive video of us testing out a lot of these products. Cool. Cool. I don't want to spend too much time on the, the detection mechanisms because the drone defensive products kind of break down into detection and then the more interesting response. There's a lot of people in the detection game, whether it's, you know, just radar or acoustic or, you know, all kinds of uh, fun stuff coming out just to, just to be able to tell you that, hey, there's a drone in your sky outside your building, you know, or near you. Um, one of the more popular ones is uh, D drone. Uh, and a lot of, you're seeing, you're starting to see a lot of collapsing of people who are implementing uh, response products are starting to partner up with companies like D-Drone too. You, you spot that there's a drone there first and then our eagle will come in, you know, and, and swoop it out of the sky, you know, it's a joint partnership. Um, yeah. So, a <laughs> couple of those. Interesting use case with this, uh, the drone shield is um, we're seeing a, uh, one of the early adopters of these drone defensive products was when they were filming the new Star Wars movies, the, the first one of the, the new batch, and people were releasing footage of scenes before the movie came out because they were flying over uh, the sets and uh, getting uh, video footage of it. So um, people asking, like, how do we prevent these drones from, from uh, you know, getting any spoiler alerts on what's going on with Han Solo or because you haven't seen it yet, I won't say. Uh, but, um, yeah, so it's a, real, it's a real problem and a real threat. And a few more airports are uh, adopting them. Although I talked to somebody at the Denver airport and nobody seemed to know what I was talking about with this. Uh, it says Denver airport's implementing air fence to be able to track, uh, you know, they're piloting this. Nobody, nobody there seemed to know what the heck I was talking about. So I don't know if it's real or not. Predator birds. Okay. So now we're getting into the fun stuff. So that was just detection mechanisms. So drone defensive products for a response. You've, uh, you've detected a rogue drone in your vicinity. What are you going to do now? So if you've read any, <laughs> if you've read any articles about, you know, Dutch police have implemented eagles to, to defend against drones or the French military has done that, it's all one company. It's all one company that does all this. Every article you've read, it's all one company. Uh, guards from above. How much do you think uh, one eagle costs? Your guesses? Yeah. Right there. How much, how much do you think one eagle costs? 15K. 15K. 100K. 100K. 2 million. 3 million. What is this, the price is right? Yeah. Too low. Yeah. yeah. $1. $1. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any more? 75,000? 10 million. 10 million. What kind of eagles do you think they got, man? They don't like crap gold or anything. Yeah. So. Uh, I was able to get access to, and just getting access to the prices on this stuff, this is all kept close to the vest. Um, and we'll be putting out the kind of research, but I was digging to get prices on these kind of products. And one of the things I took away from this research is these people have no idea what to charge for drone defensive products. <laughs> They're just throwing it out there. Yeah, that's going to be $40,000? You know, like, uh, let's see how you flinch or not. Um, it is, well, oh, seeing competing products, one might be five grand, one might be 95 grand. Uh, to do the same exact thing. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, the initial cost for one eagle is $156,000 for one eagle. They live 80 years, but they're only mission capable for 40 years. Um, what do you do with the other 40 years? They'll be your best friend. Uh, um, and it's another seven grand a year on top of that for maintenance and food and stuff like that. Yeah, so quite an investment. So I don't know who they're selling to. If they're selling to the crowd that are wasting $3 million a missile on a quadcopter, maybe they're like, this is a bargain. We should go for this. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't get access to one, needless to say. Uh, we did, uh, you want to tell them about going out with the, the Falcon? Yeah. Uh, so we tried, we actually tried this uh, to try to do this in Arizona. Uh, we tried to get, there's only one um, group that does like falconry. Um, Arizona Falconers. Yeah, thank, the, you, thank you to There's only 14 Valerie in the who, entire. You want to know anything about falconry or eagles or the market or uh, the two people over here who could tell you anything and everything you ever wanted to know about falcons and falconry. TLDR, it's not an uh, effective drone solution for the U.S. because of the animal protection laws in Britain and the U.K. and the, you know pl places in Europe. They don't really care if you want to own a falcon, but in America you can only. Yeah, this will never one. fly in the United States. You can only one if you're rehabilitating no pun. it. It's pun for the whole family. Yeah, you can't use it yeah. for any commercial purpose. Yeah. So unfortunately, it was a no-go for the uh, test video, but we tried. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we did. We did get to see one falcon. They were going to try to help us out, and it just, it just stood there, it just sat there. It's um, like nah. Yeah. 
It's like, yeah, it's like I'm, I don't feel like it today. <laughs> yeah, so in terms of security, I think it's like WC Fields was like, I never want to work with animals or kids because you never know what they're going to do. Um, it'd be like having a firewall that like, I'm kind of tired today. I'm not going to block stuff. You know, like not exactly a reliable, repeatable solution. Now, with all this, this is hypothetical. It's hypothetical. <laughs> Entirely hypothetical. All I'm saying is, is that I think I could beat an eagle or a falcon. There are countermeasures. Now, if we had gotten access to one, I was going to do, so you'll see the kind of counter to these. What are the weaknesses in these different approaches and at least as I see them uh, and how we try to exploit them. So I would have went for the carrot instead of the stick. I would have went for bacon wrapped mice countermeasures. I'm almost positive that it would have went for the food instead of my drone um, if I dropped it off. But, you know, if it did want to play rough, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, automatic identification and response uh, would not be that difficult given what's out there right now. Hypothetical. Okay, drone shooting. Um, again, uh, next Christmas, if anybody wants to get me one, uh, these things look awesome. I don't know if they work as well as they do, uh, but these things run about 70 to 80 grand. Uh, they're one of the more popular uh, can like cannon launched nets with uh, heat seeking and it even deploys a parachute so, that, so it, doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't actually break the drone. Um, so you're going to see different models, right? You're going to see the slow motion flashlight kind of form factor to shoot down drones, which uh, may be a little more realistic for. Um, one thing I want to point out, there is no best drone solution, right? Uh, in doing this, you're going to have to look at your scenario. Uh, what, uh, in terms of a drone defensive solution for a warden who's trying to guard a prison yard versus people who are trying to protect a movie studio uh, or a set uh, versus uh, someone that's trying to protect a celebrity from paparazzi drones, they're going to have different needs and different use cases that will necessitate different uh, solutions. You might not have access to different kinds of, uh, uh, the prison warden might have access to more uh, options than a normal person. Uh, this flashlight is pretty handy for, if you look at the different kind of breakdowns, you have a prison yard is something that is a fixed location you want to defend that's permanent, right? The uh, Star Wars film set is a fixed location that isn't permanent. It's not going to be there forever. Um, if you are guarding Kendra, and if you've ever seen that, I won't, I won't bust it out. You know, Kendra, the TV show. You guys, don't, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and when she had drones in her yard, uh, if you're defending a celebrity that's mobile, uh, and is in a fixed location, having a little flashlight that you can cover around with you that you can shoot out is an ideal solution. Yeah. So how can I beat these things, right? So I started looking at, you got these $80,000 net cannons. Um, you have $100,000 uh, uh, fighter drones that shoot nets out of you. There, most of these defense solutions are net based. And most of them are really light nets because it's got to carry them themselves and it's got to shoot them. So they rely not on the weight of the net pulling you down, they rely on the net getting caught up in your motors, m most of these defenses, these tens of thousands of dollars defenses uh, to be able to take down your drone. So I thought, could I beat some of these, uh, the flashlight ones are like six, seven hundred bucks, uh, uh, some of the other ones are like, you know, twenty, thirty grand, um, could I beat it with about fifteen dollars worth of chicken wire? Um, and the answer is yes, we could. <laughs> so countermeasures, yeah, can we get around? 10 minutes left. All right. We'll, wanna, we'll do some videos here. So this one, I think we're testing out the net gun counter fan, uh, countermeasure. This is Fran Brown from Bishop Fox, and we're testing a net gun of the flashlight variety versus a drone that we hardened with Sigamar. So I hope it takes time to appreciate how good of a shot this is. Oh, that, so that's the flashlight based model. That's about 20 Still feet. Fly. Still fly. The product since they go 45 feet, I don't think it would have went 45 feet. Still didn't do a thing. Cool. Oh, yeah. See, most net-based projectile uh, drone defense weapons uh, need to be light to get further, uh, so the weight itself won't weigh uh, down the drone. They rely on getting caught up in the motors to make the drone crash. Uh, just some simple, like, $20 chicken wire bubble around this was enough to prevent the, the net from falling into the motors and uh, allow us to still be able to fly uh, just fine. $10 chicken wire and zip ties, effective yeah. drone defense for just, eight. That's just chicken wire and zip ties yeah. uh, that I wrapped around it and uh, stopped it. We defeated your $80,000 net gun. Uh, 
I know we're running, I know we're running short on time, so just in case I don't get to it, I was talking to one of the, the other air to air based net, uh, uh, people who sell products, and I was explaining how I was going to use the chicken wire. Like, what kind of tests are you running? Uh, we have the prototype. Maybe we could send it to you and get it going. I explained what I was going to do, and they're like, "Oh no, maybe I don't think we could sell your product because I don't think it's going to work." Uh, uh, I was like, "Oh man." Um, So yeah, so there's plenty of uh, net guns out there, and people are releasing do-it-yourself ones. But uh, those flashlight ones go about for five, six hundred, uh, seven hundred bucks in some cases. Now I will say we have uh, one demo for this guy. Have any of you guys seen these like shotgun shells with nets in them? Uh, these these worked way better than I thought they were going to work, I and mean, the cheapest out of anything we tested. It's about twenty bucks for about three shells, and uh, they were the only net-based thing that we tested that actually beat my chicken wire cage. Uh, because it's basically still shooting, even as a net, it's basically shooting metal sh out of a shotgun at stuff. Punch the hole right through the net. Yeah, punch the hole right through it. <laughs> yeah. First, uh, we're going to go ahead and try the Skynet shotgun shells, uh, which are 12 gauge shotgun shells that have deploy a net uh, specifically to try to take down drones. The Skynet shotgun shells are one of the simpler drone defense options available. Just $20 for three, and they can be fired from any traditional shotgun. The difference, of course, is the netting, which wraps around the drone's propellers to take it down. The Skynets were extremely effective. They're the cheapest out of all the solutions by far. From 70 feet out, it took them three to five shots per drone. That's a metal piece that went into that. Yeah. So what do you say this? So we can see here, looks like if we had so more it, it did shoot it out of the sky. bent in the net into the motor. We apply a lot more zip ties here to hold it tight. Look at you, even right, no, no, right here, dude. Look at that. It a blew metal, a hole in the that's metal. That's a metal piece that went straight through. Right. Yeah, so I just put some like cartoon like shotgun holes in the, in the uh, chicken wire there. Um, and when you, when you think like net, you know, ammo, you think somewhat safe or uh, partially safe. This, uh, I think you would absolutely die if you got shot with uh, uh, this stuff. Um, five minutes. Yeah, five minutes? Okay. So, you know, we'll just cut to some more videos. We'll go to the right. last one. We're going to go to the, the really fun one now. Yeah, so nope. one thing I want to say about this. Lastly, the piece de la resistance, uh, the big guy, we have uh, the sparrow hawk attached to it. Good. So one, one thing I want to say about this is, um, and I'll, I'll fly through some of these guys. You look through our slides. Out of the air-to-air -air based drone defense products, right, I called all of them. All of them are either, uh, they're, they're about to release their V2 any day now, and they check the shelf. Bob, check the shelf. There's no more V1 left. Almost none of them actually sell any product. Uh, you know, th th you got years going back with some of these products. Uh, they're winning awards, and, and, and eventually you find out, like, we're hoping to ship our first round of products by the end of this year. It looks like they've had products out for years. I only found one company that would act out of the air to air based ones that would actually sell me, and it was a prototype still, but actually were willing to sell me a prototype for some air to air based combat. And it's one of the ones of the nature of it drops a huge net and tries to scoop in on it. Lastly, the piece de la resistance, uh, the big guy. We have uh, the Sparrow Hawk attached to a huge DJI M600 uh, drone, and uh, essentially it's going to be some air-to-air -air combat. It's going to try to go catch up to the danger drone with a really big net and swoop it up to try to capture the drone. I love how it's kind of creepy. Here. It's just Sparrow like, Hawk no. system is by far the most expensive option Brown tested. The drone and the net yeah. system together come close to around $11,000. Yeah, about 11 grand. Well, the, the, the real cost is the actual drone itself, which is our, the filmographer is using the same exact drone. It's a DJI M600. Uh, but a couple of interesting things here. They did sell us one. You, some, you notice us unfurl it by hand. They're supposed to be able to do it. Uh, I was like, do you have an instruction manual for this? And the guy was like, can you give us an extra day? I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, can you send it to me? They're writing it as you go, right? This guy sends me five pages of just pure text, not a single picture, not a single image. No I'd be like if I shipped you a box full of bicycle parts, like a million parts, and just like just prose, just text, and being as articulate as I can describing how to build a bicycle. And I, you know, I was like, can you, get, you take a photo with your phone or something, man? He's like, he's like, it's pretty straightforward. I was like, no, it's pretty much the exact opposite of straightforward. Uh, yeah, it's not straightforward even in the least bit. Um, but we were able to get it going anyway. So that, that isn't what you saw right there is an interceptor type, obviously, air to air interceptor type. Yeah. Um, it costs too much in terms of defenses against that. I was really debating having, uh, with those ones that have to swoop in, they have to get really close to you 
and they have to come in from a predictable direction, right? If it's chasing me, it's going to come from behind me. And I wanted to use a confetti gun, uh, do like Maverick style, like I'm bringing him in closer, let it get in closer, and use a confetti gun out the rear to basically fart confetti on it and make it crash the big drone, which I'm pretty confident would have worked, but it's pretty expensive uh, gamble at this amount of time. Mm. Would the chicken wire stop it? In that case, I think it would probably grab onto the chicken wire. The chicken wire is more about the ones that shoot the net at it, hoping that the net will take it down. Um, yeah. I think it would actually probably grip up the chicken wire. I think part of the other problem is, is if they have a faster drone than your interceptor drone, there's nothing you can do, right? Um, so let's get to these real quick. So drone shooting. This drone catcher is one of the ones you'll see the most. It's got like dog fighting stuff going on. They got stuff going back years. Uh, I found in some uh, YouTube uh, subtitle translations from their, they say it's going to be about 30,000 euro uh, for one of them. Uh, and even with all this stuff going back years and years, they're really hoping to ship their first batch of products by the end of this year. Uh, can't buy it right now. Uh, airspace, they wouldn't even get back to me. They got back to one of our people saying it costs millions of dollars um, to shoot, basically shoot a net at it in the air. Uh, this is from Michigan, a uh, little research project. And this one's interesting, Excipio. This was Excipio. Uh, doing the Wayback Machine, it was 3,500 bucks for one of these net shooter Excipios uh, back in December. Uh, they've rebranded. They're going to be called Drone Hunter. You can't buy the old Excipio anymore. Drone Hunter is not for sale yet. But what it is, it went from $3,500 to $47,500 in a couple months with no clear identification as to what's going to be different about it. And it's kind of the, uh, I think they were like, we were charging how much? We need to charge more than that. So pricing is all over the board right now. Basically, you ask and call them the price, and they're like, who are you? And if you're government, they like add a couple zeros. Yeah. yeah. You have a bunch of these guys with the, the, like the Sparrowhawk that we tested. I found a, uh, a PDF with an old invoice uh, from the end of the year for, uh, it was 25,000 euro for one of these other guys. We bought ours for, the actual Sparrowhawk is only 5,000 pounds uh, itself, so versus 25,000 euros for a similar product. Um, you can see they're all over the board. Sparrowhawk. Jamming, oh, you see all these guys, none of these guys could sell in the United States and they won't be able to. Yeah. You see all these articles about these jamming devices, uh, for the most part, you can't jam GPS, you can't jam cell phone connections, which is what the jam danger drone uses for command and control. Uh, they're not allowed to sell these in the United States, um, and, they, and they won't be in so, time in the foreseeable yeah. future. Yeah, we're just basically just doing a reverse uh, tunnel over cell phone connection, a little USB uh, 3G adapter for, to control the uh, danger drone, making it pretty much uh, uh, impossible for most of these jammers to, the ones that are legal to buy anyway, to work against it. Guys, I know we're uh, running short on time. We will have uh, be able to take questions out there if you will. Lasers. Okay, lasers. So the end. these run or directed energy weapons. These things are crazy. These basically, the guys at Boeing were like, maybe they'll just make a little dumbed down version of the ones we used to shoot like real planes out of the sky, like fighter jets. Uh, so they kind of just made like a, you know, they're not as good as that department 13 up in the corner there. Uh, but um, yeah, they created these auto tracking like, uh, basically, a, a drone going crazy fast, it was just like auto tracking, no problem. You just see it burst into flames with directed energy weapons. Um, these things, I think Boeing's are about $11 million a unit, and I think, uh, I think it's like Raytheon runs about $6 million a unit, but you're looking at a million dollars for one of these guys, throw it in the back of your truck to, uh, to knock these out. Um, you see them, they're, they're putting them on ships and trucks, basically deploying them. Uh, they can be beaten, though. They can be beaten. I'm always looking to beat, I bet I could beat these lasers. Um, basically, uh, China was talking all kinds of crap, saying we, uh, we, could, we could beat most of uh, the U.S.'s lasers with just smoke bombs. Well, like, and it may actually be true. Um, smoke and dust and obscurance really degrades the ability to use these. Uh, putting mirrors, flashy mirrors on your drone uh, to, uh, to ward off the laser. Um, one of my favorites is the metamaterials, which bends the, uh, the light and energy around it, like kind of like Predator. So you'd be looking like Predator on your drone. They actually have, you wouldn't look like Predator, but it does something similar in terms of like displacing the heat and energy. And uh, the last one, there's actually a project and a product that somebody does that has auto tracking of detects that a laser is on you, on your drone, and immediately responds with another laser back uh, to take it out. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's a whole, people sell these products. It's pretty cool. Try to confuse the target. Uh, again, we didn't have millions of dollars to test this stuff out, but maybe, maybe next year, you know. Uh, legal issues. Um, this guy is a hero. It's some, some random guy. Basically, anyone who registered their drones last year, you can get your money back. This guy was like, this law is just bullcrap, man. I'm suing, I'm suing the government. He won. So the registration drone law from last year got thrown out a couple months ago. Um, okay, we're going to wrap up. Yep. Um, 
one last thing with the shotguns and uh, and uh, people are like, why don't you just shoot a regular shotgun at that point? Uh, and, like this guy did. He's shooting his, above his house with his kids and all. I don't know if you guys have ever seen anyone poke a lipo battery that's in these guys. Yeah, They're guys basically like it. lava bombs that are like that might blow up for no reason whatsoever, let alone if you're shooting a shotgun at it. Um, and uh, spit flames everywhere. So not as something you want to do in a residential area, uh, trying to shoot these guys out of the sky. Uh, and yep, and the future is awesome. Uh, drone swarms. None of these defenses are going to work against drone swarms. Uh, none of these nets. You get, if I send 5,000 drones, it's not going to do anything against you know, do a that. couple. Yeah, you know, these nets aren't going to do anything. Uh, super small bug-sized drones. Hybrid approaches. We have one of these spiders, so a drone could drop off a spider and it can crawl on a building, could plug in an ethernet port. Uh, that stuff's there. Um, or you'll see like submarines that are coming up just long enough to shoot something in the air off or UPS trucks that are driving your neighborhood and then deploying with a drone. The hybrid approach is going to be big in the future. And uh, yeah, micro bugs. And underwater drones. Underwater supremacy. The Navy's kind of leaving the way. You think air when you hear drone and drone swarms. No one's thinking uh, naval supremacy and a million little uh, Raspberry Pi based submarines uh, just controlling the ocean. And uh, it's kind of a big deal still, but nobody thinks about it. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Raspberry Pi based. Uh, somebody released uh, some dog fighting AI stuff for the Raspberry Pi, which is beaten real. So I think the next Top Gun that's coming out, I think it's going to be all Raspberry Pis. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the plaque for the alternates down in the other Raspberry Pi room or, you know, something like that. But it's pretty freaky. It was beating this guy nonstop. Um, and that's, uh, that's it. We're out of time. Thanks, guys. Yes.